G'day folks, Chris McLean back with yet another episode of the show. I'm excited today to have Paul from Insightful in the studio. And they're a full service agency working with all kinds of businesses across Australia in both B2C and B2B spaces. But more importantly, Paul also runs a wildly popular Facebook group for Aussie businesses, which he uses as a lead source for his agency and a very effective one at that. And that's what we're going to get into today is how to leverage a Facebook group, a community for building your business and building your agency. Paul, great to chat, mate. Thanks for dropping by. Hey, you're a stay. Nice. Thanks for having me. And I think we actually met through the group. I joined your group. Um, see, Auss- Aussie, Aussie business owners. Um, how, how many members have you got in the group now? Um, I think we just notched up about 16,000 members at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's growing pretty quickly. I've got a couple other groups as well. I've got a, a Shopify group that's got um, okay. nearly 7,000 in it and a cryptocurrency group that's got 10,000 and a, all sorts of other interesting groups. So I, I, I built a group for a client um, a year ago relating to divorce called Divorce Support. Australia and it's got like 2,000 people and I don't even do anything with it. I don't actually have the client anymore that are still growing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's oh, interesting. Wow. Yeah, I think I've you know, heard heard the term or the phrase going around that community is the new black community, building communities is um, an amazing sort of essentially organic marketing method um, and very effective for agency. So you use these groups essentially to find clients for your agency. Is that, yeah. is that why you set it up in the first place? Um, and I, I initially started the business owner group. Um, there is a bit of a backstory to why I started the first one. So I was a member of a Victorian business owner community um, and it was privately run at the time um, and it was very heavy handed. They were very controlling about the way they run the group. Um, right. And then we got to a, that group got to a point where it was handed over to um a sorry, I, I stand corrected. It was it was run by the government, and then it was handed over to an agency to run, and that agency pretty much destroyed that group. Um, well, I feel like they just made a bit of a mess of it. Um, mm. So I kicked up a stink and made a bit of a hurrah. And then during the process of leaving, like I had like fifty people, hundred people, kind of say, you know, hey, we agree with what you're saying as well. But let us know when you start your own group. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's how our group was originally started. So yeah, right. Yeah, it was interesting. Right. Mm, mm. So what? What? I mean, we're going to get into what made the group successful, but what? What? Let's start with what? What was it that actually made that group unsuccessful when and the agency stepped in and did it wrong? Was it the engagement? Was just they, yeah, they ran I think, it poorly? They let people the wrong people in. What were um, the components? A, a lot of people kind of thought that they had their own agenda, so it wasn't really a, a neutral kind of group anymore mm. um which turned a lot of the people off so a lot of the key contributors um i appointed to become moderators and admin members of my group so there's like 10 admins or something now in my group so they were long time members in that group and i think some of them are still in that group at the moment um, and i have no idea how that group is run anymore at all so um mm. but yeah that's kind of that's the process that we initially went through to start the group obviously Mm-hmm. And then when the agency stepped in, was it apart from obviously they, they have an agenda um, to drive business and, and that's probably a, a critical component of this, right, is having some level of neutrality or at least setting very clear expectations around a group of what the purpose is. You know, for me, I'm an agency coach. If you're joining my group, I'm going to talk about coaching and at some point probably try and pitch my services or yep. DM you or talk to you. <clears throat> How do you, how do you, for people that are interested in doing something like this, what kind of are that? How do you set that expectation? Do, is it better? I mean, your group is quite neutral in terms of the, the business group. It's a, a Victorian business group. So it's not specifically <coughs> about marketing or agency or services. It's really, I mean, people are on there asking tax questions and questions about government support for coronavirus payments and all that kind of thing. So yep, it's yep. very neutral. How do you take that and sort of pivot that to your services? Is that is that a formula you found well, having that very neutral kind of group versus a more pointed um, you know, digital marketing for Australian businesses? Group, yeah, yeah, example? definitely. Um, well, 
originally for a long time uh, so our group is um australian wide group as well not just victorian too so okay. um we there there are a lot of other agency owners in our group and for the most part i never really had much of a problem having those people in that group like you said keeping it um quite neutral as well um which i think is good if you've got a lot of experts adding on a value you know you kind of need to let your audience decide who they want to work with as well um Recently, though, we have cleaned it up a bit and removed quite a few of the, you know, like competitors, so, so to speak, um, from that group for, you know, and, and someone we consider a competitor could, not, you know, might not necessarily be bigger than us, smaller than us. Um, but um, typically, like our framework for removing someone from the group is, that, you know, are they actually going to provide a good service to this community, um, a better service than us? You know, if, if that's the case, that's great. They can stay. Um, but if they're providing an inferior service, I kind of feel very obligated to get rid of them. Um, mm -hmm. And in in my Shopify group, more so than my business owner group, um, we've got four admins in that group, three or four admins in that group. Um, one of them is another guy from Melbourne. He runs his own agency um, that is similar to us. Um, he has a few more few more clients and a bit different size. So, but I'm happy for him to stay because I know he's a good operator. Um, another one of the admins um, is also, he specializes in email marketing. So again, that's a service we don't provide anyway. So I'm quite comfortable mm. for him to stay. Um, mm. And another one of the admins um, runs his own e-com store, but he does three, he just started doing 3PL fulfillment services. So third-party logistics. So mm. for me, that's, fine i'm just i'm happy for them to stay in the group you know there with there's people in our group that are going to need that service i know that he's a good guy um he provides a good service so you know that's totally fine for him to stay in our group mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting you're giving that diversity and i think it's you're giving you're providing much more value and different perspectives and different layers of expertise in that group yep. is that critical to a group let's talk us through content because i know that's as as someone that runs a group constantly creating content that that you know that it's a time commitment right it's a resource commitment it's something i've got to think about i've got to approve posts how have you managed that because your groups are quite open how, how often do you actually post or do you leave it more just to the group to um gen, to gen, basically user generated content what's your sort of philosophy um, on on that yeah, back when I started, I would do like three or four posts a week in the group. Um, and they would literally be like, hey, guys, here's 10 steps that you need to do to improve your email marketing. Here's 10 ways you can improve your on-page optimization for search engine optimization. Here is um, 10 organic ways you can acquire, you know, your next 100 customers for your e-commerce store with no money kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, so um, I, I've stopped... Um, I would say the last year I haven't been as active because people kind of know that I run the group anyway and they'll typically reach out to me. But if I ever kind of get into the state where I'm like, you know, oh, it's time to get some more clients on board, I can I can go into either of those two groups that I've mentioned. So, for example, um, in the Shopify group, I'll be like, yeah, there's Shopify people in here that are selling children's toys. So we've got a client that sells like 50K of children's toys a month, you know, um, so I'll just come along and go, hey, we've got a client that sells children's toys. They're spending three grand a month. They're converting like 25, 30 grand in AdWords. Here's mm -hmm. the return on ad spend. Here's your impressions and your click-through rate and your conversion rate. Have a look. Um, if this isn't of interest to you, um, reach out to me and, you know, put a comment on here and away we go. So there's no hard pitch. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. we're doing this for other people like you. Um, if you want to do the same thing, just you know, hit me up. So, um, mm -hmm. and other things like doing, you know, hey, post, post a link to your website and I'll give you a free video audit of your website. It'll go for like 10 minutes and I'll tell you, you know, 10 minutes worth of value. Um, so you do that, people will reach out to you and away you go. Like anytime mm -hmm. I do that, I typically onboard. Like if I do it and I get like 30 responses, I'll onboard like mm -hmm. 10 people pretty quickly. So, um, yeah. And the other 10 will be like, you know, they'll come on board in another couple of months and the 10, the final 10, but just won't be a good fit. So they're too small or, you know, mm. or something along those lines. So, yeah. Um, well, it's yeah, pretty it's powerful and so an amazing conversion rate. So have, have you found a difference between 
when you were posting, you know, here's top 10, top, top 10 tips, here's some strategy, here's some methods, here's a free training, blah, 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 versus just kind of letting it go organically. Is there still regular, I mean, at 15 odd thousand people, um, how many posts do you get a day? Are people quite happy to come in and to sort of keep, keep the flow of content going without you being involved? Um, that's sort of part one of the question. Part two, yep. do you notice as, as obviously this is a, a lead source for you, um, do you have you found any difference between when you are more like adding value content versus just letting it grow and coming in with, hey, um, here's something we're doing for for another client? Do yeah. you find a, a distinction there? Um, so the groups, are, yeah, both groups are still um, very active and our admin team keep it active as well. So we can talk more about that, obviously, later in the interview about building an admin team and what, what involves in that process. But, yeah. um, you know, they're all like in the groups posting things about, hey, here's some grants that you can get for your business or in the, that's in the business owner group or mm -hmm. in the Shopify group, hey, here's some, you know, whatever, some a new SEO article that's just come out or something along those lines. Um, and then you're saying, um, have I noticed a difference? Um, yeah, if I'm not posting, I definitely don't get as much work as I, I would. Like I, I built my business basically using Facebook groups when I started it in 2016. So, <coughs> so I sold another business in 2014, um, exited that business, um, and then basically thought, well, what am I going to do now? So um, I I thought, okay, I'm pretty good at marketing. So um, I, I, I jumped over and said, it, uh, where am I going to get clients with for not spending any money? Because I'm i pretty, um, and I might, have been, I might be diversifying here and, you know, going down a path that you're not asking me about. But um, when, I, yeah, when I started that business, I'm like, I, I'm good at building businesses without spending money. So I'm like, let's see if I can do it again. Hence, I built that group. And then the first year that I had that group, I did um, – 450k in revenue pretty much just from facebook groups so um you know that's no ad spend no nothing like that so um and then obviously over the last three or four years that i've turned it back a bit and i haven't been as active um my revenue is still very good you know, is very good as well but if i was doing more i'd probably be pushing like you know much higher revenue numbers as well so i, I really you know it's it's interesting that you say it so that, you know i should really get back in there and um push those groups a lot harder and really leverage them as well so um which probably brings me to a point that you know i, I watched your one of your last podcast one of your last interviews where you um spoke to i forget her name but they um they work their their appointment setters so you know they help you train up other people to nurture your groups so i'm exploring that option as well so i will just train up someone else to you know do what i do you know so um, this, yeah, there's lots of options available. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I guess the, the the principle, the point of coming back to is that content is, it is important to have that some sort of regular flow yep. of content from the admins, from the page itself to keep it going. Um, that, that's kind of what I what, what really wanted to, to get to was. Yeah, yeah. Set and forget. Set and forget doesn't really work. Versus. Yeah, you really, you really need to map out what you're going to do for like the next four months. And it's oh. not hard. It's like, okay, on Tuesday, I, ha I have times that I post that are peak times. I know this, like this podcast is peak performance. So what is the yeah. peak time to posting? So yeah. it's like Tuesday at three o'clock, Thursday at four o'clock. So I've just got a Google sheet that I go, yep, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to be like, hey guys, like, um, does anyone need help with this? You know, da -da -da -da. hey guys, on Thursday, um, here's 10 things that are going to help you move forward. Do that for four months, then you don't need to think about it. It's easy. So um, mm. in the past, even like I've even twice, had... Even as, as little as twice a week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because those posts mm. blow up like really, really quickly. Like even little things like um, you can do like a like wall. I don't know if you've seen a like wall before, but you can be like, um, especially for someone like myself that does website development um i can be like hey guys post a link to your website and then um go and check out everybody else's website that gets posted and you're going to get like 100 people posting a link to their website on that um so then i can come along and just be like hey do you want an audit of your website i can make some suggestions on what you can do to um you know improve your site as well so um yeah there's a lot of a lot of different things that you can do mm -hmm. yeah brilliant <laughs> Yeah, it's certainly a furtive ground, but I think that 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 is a a critical distinction of where you say you know this is a free a free marketing 
but you're spending time, right? This, yeah, they're spending money or to grow a business, yeah, this investing money or investing time. Um, yep. And this is more of a, a, a time investment, but for a couple of posts a week to get something going, to get 10, 20, 30 uh, conversations happening in a week, that's pretty significant. Um, but that is off of 15,000 people. How, how did you initially start and how quickly did that, did the group grow? Um, to get to, you know, 10, 5, 10, 15,000, because that's a pretty significantly large group. Yep. Um, I think we got to like two to 3,000 within like a few months really, really quickly. So um, if you're members of other communities and stuff, you know, you can be having conversations. But back then it was much easier. So you'd have a conversation mm -hmm. with other people in groups, you know, and they'd be like, hey, look, I'm just waiting, you know, that I've, I've started not spamming people, but like, hey, waiting, you know, I see, I know you're a member of this group we've spoken before started my own group, you know, head over and have a look. So um, right. groups can grow really quickly, especially if you're providing like huge value. Like back then I was doing a lot more content as well. That content that wasn't available as well because I've got a lot, my background's e-commerce. So I've got like 22 years of e-com right. experience. So, um, you know, I was just pumping the group with lots of really good content and like, you know, hey guys, what's all... Um, jump on and have a I don't think zoom was around then I'm just trying to think <laughs> backwards it was all like hey anyone want to jump on a webinar or something like this and we'll, yeah, just, right. we'll just have a chat so stuff like that yeah. in 2006 lives wouldn't then. Even been around back then no nah, like no nah, exactly so you know when lives first come out it was crazy so um mm. but yeah like group honestly they they don't take that long to grow like if you're providing really good value and you've got mm. like um 20 to 50 really solid foundational members with um, big networks. So you can incentivize them pretty quickly um, as well. So you're doing things like, hey, guys, add all your friends, and I'm going to randomly pick someone to win 100 bucks. That adds the most amount of friends. Typically, you'll find someone will go crazy and add, like, you know, 500 people in, like, three days. So, um, yeah, yeah it, right. that doesn't take long to build a big audience. And people, mm -hmm. business people know other business people, especially people that are in like BNIs and things like this and, you know, networking mm -hmm. communities and, you know, they're, they're yeah. just like big connectors. So, mm -hmm. mm. And so you kind of got a nice spread of groups, whether like Spotify is quite a, a niched group, then your, your business owner group is Australian business owners is quite broad. Yeah, Did Shopify, find sorry. This, uh, sorry, Shopify, why did I say Spotify? Yeah, Shopify pretty Spotify. close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same, same. Um, yeah, so Shopify is a, obviously a specific e-com business type versus yep. a, a broader um, business category. Have you seen differences in in the, the speed of growth for something that's much more niche versus something that's really broad um, or, or, or differences in quality of, of leads that come out of those groups? That sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. So... Uh, I'll use my cryptocurrency group, for example. So that went from like mm -hmm. zero to 10,000 in like a year and a half or something really, really quick. Because oh, wow. crypto obviously would just like last year just blew up really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd say the same with the Shopify group. I think we're getting a couple hundred new members a month in the Shopify group. Because again, Shopify is like, um, I believe it's the second biggest e-com platform next to WooCommerce out there at the moment. So mm -hmm. Um, again, you, you build your groups around things that are just like blowing up, you know, businesses are always going to blow up, you know, like, so, yeah. um, if my group was more targeted to like, you know, I, I could even start a side group now, like, you know, how to start a business during COVID, like that group would just go stupid. Like, cause everyone's sitting mm -hmm. at home unemployed going, shit, where do I go? I need to go and plug in my umbilical cord to, to somewhere to live to, do you know what I mean? So yeah, um, enjoy, yeah, get and that, that's a major component, right? Is that that human connection, that community, that support group? Um, yep. How 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 are you making sure that you're fostering that? Is that through the content? Um, is that through the group rules, like that kind of thing? How how are you making fostering that community, or is that something that just kind of naturally comes out of a Facebook group? What do you mean by when you it? say fostering it? Like uh, so, do, do, yeah, do you, do you actively um, help people connect or is it just the nature of a Facebook group where people are seeking, particularly in today in COVID times when we're locked down and, and don't have that that human connection, people are just looking for somewhere to go and, and chat to somebody or yeah, feel yep. connected to somebody? Is it just a natural space for people to get that? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. They, you know, obviously it'll come up in their recommended groups 
um, feeds yeah. as well, saying, hey, we can see you're a member of all these other groups. You know, have you found this group yet? So right. um, I'm sure that's how most people find groups. I don't know what mm -hmm. the threshold is with that, like whether a group needs to be, you know, like um, a thousand people, two thousand people, whatever, before it starts coming up in there because my bigs are all up, my groups are all obviously quite big so mm -hmm. um even the smaller groups so i still i'm always still surprised i'm like how is a group with like a thousand people getting like you know 100 new people a month joining it um typically i find that um it's the members that just take it upon themselves to add their friends and family to that right. as to the groups as well because you know if, if it's a if the group solves a pain point then mm -hmm. um you know, it's pretty easy to grow those grow those groups as well. Because, like, if you think about, like, the divorce group, for example, you know, one divorce person typically knows 10 other people going through divorce. So they're like, hey, I found a community. Come join. It's a good community. You're going to learn stuff. Same with e-commerce, you know. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, hey, I've got an e-com store. It's not making sales. Um, I found this group. Come join this group. So, um, they, they yeah, they grow very organically. When I, and Facebook mm -hmm. are pushing groups. Um really really hard at the moment they're doing a lot of work there's a lot of innovation happening even last it was last year they and i'm pretty sure this is correct a few people mentioned i didn't see it but they run an ad um at the super bowl promoting people to join facebook groups so wow. that in yeah. itself is huge mm -hmm. so they're obviously quite interested as well um in, in growing the community because pages facebook pages are dead facebook pages the only thing they serve is a bit of a trust factor for people going oh yeah cool these guys are alive <laughs> they post yeah. once a week that they're doing something and you know so yeah um, it's more you, you need it for advertising right to run ads you need a page yes yep. so it's the, yep. the main reason people have them yeah yeah it's interesting because they they were all the rage and they were being pushed heavily you know, five ten years ago i guess um, I think they'll come back. Like that's why yeah. I keep doing it for clients. Um, you know, because Facebook are going to want to keep people on their platform using every channel that they've got. Groups is a channel. Pages is a channel. You know, yeah. newsfeed is a channel. So mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't discount it. Like it's the biggest social media platform in the whole, in the world. So they can flip the yeah. switch tomorrow and go, hey, you know what? Reach is going to be amazing starting now. And like all you guys mm -hmm. are over on TikTok. Like. Okay, shit, come back. <laughs> so, yeah. You know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like inside groups, are they're also pushing the kind of um the private rooms, the the clubhouse competitor type bar. Yeah, so, you know, create private rooms and have private chats and that sort of things. So I think groups is maybe the place that they're kind of trying to bring that that clubhouse competitor kind of piece in as well. So, mm. yeah, Facebook's yeah. I mean, always Facebook's always a little bit like these days they're always a little bit slow to the party with that kind of stuff they i think they wait say really they wait to see what's popular and go we'll just copy it and do it <laughs> yeah it's like yeah <laughs> it's, it's, business. it's gonna work we're all we'll, we'll build it or we'll kill it or we'll buy it so yeah. um which yeah. is a good model when you've got you know when you've got lots of money behind you so yeah yeah when you're a, a monopoly you can uh you can afford that you can afford to wait at that the state they're in they've innovated enough that they can yeah they can wait and go okay what's 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 working okay that's going really well okay we'll just make a competitor product bang there we go so yeah yeah exactly it. and you yeah. mentioned um pages as well like a lot of people um use your page to generate traffic to your group so you hey you know like for you yourself for example you're like you can have your page and you can like hey you know this is the big because you can't run ads in the group obviously you can't build the group via ads mm -hmm. at the moment so you yeah. can run ads on your page going hey guys look i've got a community it's over here come join our send them to a landing page and go hey, it's chris mclean you know yeah. uh, i do this this and this join our group away we go um super cheap to get people into your group doing that mm. as well mm. yeah 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 very interesting yeah i think the, it's all group and community very 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 uh powerful way to literally build community but as, as a lead generation mechanism for agencies for businesses i think it's super powerful because you are building that like no trust factor you're providing value i mean as long as you are providing value um you if you and uh, i think there's that nice thing where you as the admin is the person that's bringing that group like you are the head of that community you're the head of that tribe <laughs> Right, yep. and that 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 gives you an even an even higher positioning within that community. So you know you are the leader of 18, 15, 16, 17, 20,000 people. That's pretty significant validation 
or hmm. authority expertise all of that stuff we trying to generate through marketing yep. um you know, it's a pre pretty significant way to sort of sit atop a, a really big tribe and and and, and yeah as you said as you're doing leveraging that to to build your business out in terms uh, of the sorry go yeah yeah I, I i've seen guys like um i won't mention who they are because i don't feel like their program is like, i've i've done these people program and it was terrible and it was very expensive but i'll give you the backstory they had a Facebook community with, let's say, 10,000, 20,000 people, and they're very intelligent guys, right? But they will take you from their group, get you on a call, charge you <clears throat> a lot of money. like. Um, and then I know these guys, for, for, like at the moment, last year or this year or something, they've done like 40 million bucks worth of revenue, largely mm -hmm. from Facebook groups and ads as well. But mm -hmm. I know that like their group generated, really got them going really early on in the piece as well. So... Mm -hmm. um, there are many people out there that just crush it. Like there's a, there's a, a coach out there in Australia called Taki Moore. Um, a lot of people yeah. who know Taki who listen to your podcast, like really good guy, runs a really good group. I'm not a paid member or anything, but I've, I've seen what he does. I, I don't know how long he's been doing it for, but, you know, people like that, that they're, they're doing a really good job. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, lots of options available. Mm. I think that that is always the what it comes back to. You can You can... Have, you can do whatever you want in marketing. You can use any mechanism, but it always comes back to the principle of are you actually solving someone's problem, helping them get somewhere faster, helping them feel better about themselves, actually solving a problem, actually mm. genuinely adding value and not just adding value by doing value posts. Right? Yep. If you're genuinely, genuinely supporting people, helping people, contributing, um, adding value, that comes first and then the, the mechanism putting that into a Facebook group or a page or LinkedIn or whatever, it, it sort of always comes back to that value piece, right? You've always got to genuinely yep. provide a, a good product and then that has to lead to a good product. So yeah, you need to <laughs> talk, to, you need to talk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. Like you need to mm -hmm. be able to like, you know, do what you're going to say as well. So over the liver, yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, great advice. So take us through, just to kind of wrap this conversation, take us through, are there any, if someone's starting a group, they want to build it, get it going as quick as possible in terms of setup, settings, public versus private, allowing posts, having to monitor posts um, or approve posts, bringing in other admins, having people help you grow what are, what are, when you, if you were going to set up a new group tomorrow what are some of the the first things that you would do to launch to, to make it successful yeah you definitely um so like um like i've got a course on this where i teach people how to do this as well i'm not going to pitch that on here because that'd be rude of me but <laughs> the the biggest things i will tell you that you should do when you're starting a group is that you really need to assemble a really solid admin team because you can't do it yourself. So um, my recommendation is to get like four or five um, similar people to yourself in the same um, niche industry, whatever it is um, that you're trying to, like the problem that you're trying to solve, bring them into your group because you're going to build the groups, um, the, the vibe of the group um, much quicker. So say, for example, um, I'm just trying to think out loud. Even if you want to throw an example at me about a certain type of business, I'd, I can tell you how I would go about building that um, if you've got any ideas that are coming to you at the moment. So well, um, say a coaching business. Is it? Yeah, coaching business. So um, a, a single coaching business, there's only one coach or multiple coaches. Uh, so just say, well, for myself, it's a, someone that's coaching marketing agencies as an individual. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so I would, um, I would start that group and I guess one of the, the, the quickest things I would probably rate, I'd probably do is some, something similar that you already are doing would be to, um, go and interview agency owners that are actually multiple steps ahead of where your current member base is. So say, for example, myself that, you know, I'm like, how do I get to $5 million a year? Um, you want to be able to 
go and for you in, in building your group and trying to solve my problem, it would be, okay, how do I go and find someone that's doing like $10 million a year? Um, bring them into your group. Um, you could do things like a video interview with them, a live question and answer. And then people like myself are just going to naturally gravitate to that because they're like, hey, Chris is running this, um, you know, whatever it is, an, an interview with someone that's actually done what I need to do. He's going to show me how to get where I need to go because that's what everyone wants. And, and that's what everyone if you think of a group, it's um, one of the key things that you constantly kind of need to think about is everyone joining that group wants movement and they want better status. So they want to move from where they are to where they, to where they want to go and they want to look better to their friends. So, um, yeah, so, you know, for example, like I said, building, um, you know, bringing those experts in will definitely be the number one thing. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you've got a page and stuff as well. Like you could really leverage that as well and just literally target some paid ads to some agency owners as well. Um, other things you could join, um, other Facebook groups with other where your potential client might actually be hanging out and sort of start interacting with other people as well to sort of, you know, engage with them and say, hey, look, I've got this community of like-minded like-minded business owners. Um, you're welcome to join, you know, uh, so you know head on over and come and come and join our group so um that's just a couple of uh, things um mm -hmm. it really yeah e every group is different though like and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of agency owners out there like i've i've got a client that is a business coach um there's three business coaches in their um in their business and what they do for example to grow their group so part of their strategy is like they'll have a, they have a call center that literally calls business owners all over Australia. That is, um, that could be their potential client. So, Hey, look, you know, we, we, we're interested in having a chat with you about how we can grow your business. Um, we want to send you a free magazine that we've got. So they put together a monthly magazine and they send that out for free. Um, and we just want to send you a link to our website, check it out. So, in both of those areas, you go to their website and it's pretty prominent on their website. Hey, join our free Facebook group. And then you also get the magazine. Hey, join our free Facebook group. So they're building that community like that. Um, and then they go live like Tuesdays and Thursdays, I believe they do, just answering questions. So like, you know, hey, what's the best business book you've read on how to manage your finances in business, you know, and what did you think about it? So, um all of these things just naturally, organically, um, you know, builds up the groups. So, mm. yeah, that's probably a few things that you can you can definitely get started with. Mm. In terms of, is there is there any better preference for having a private group versus a public group in terms well, of getting people in? Yeah, well, a public group means people on the outside of the group can see what's going on internal inside that group. So, I find that most people don't like that. Um, so, mm. they. They don't want their friends and family being like, "Hey, you know, my business is crap. It's dying. I need help. What do I do?" They, they don't want. They, they want to keep that separate from everyone else. Especially like, imagine the divorce support group. So you go in there and you're like, "My wife driving me mental. Like, you know, what I mean, what do I do?" Your wife, yeah. your and then you ask these the post. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely yeah, keep yeah. those groups private. So <laughs> I, I recommend most yeah. people just keep all groups private, and, unless it's yeah. um. I've got a group called Dog Spotting Australia, which is. Um, there's another group called Dog Spotting, which is a global group and it has 2 million members or something. So we made a little one just for Australia. It's got like a 1,000 members. When we started that, mm -hmm. that was open just so people could see what was going on. It's not doesn't need to be a secret that you're taking photos mm -hmm. of dogs, for example. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. not yeah. not keep top secret conspiracy mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good. That's a good, good distinction. That, yeah, and anyone can see what's going on in the group and gives that kind of anonymity, but kind of uh, uh what's the word what's the word on the end ex ex there's an exclusivity of a exclusive. tribe we're, we're, yeah. we're part of this tribe it's our group um, well, well you can actually do an anonymous post in facebook groups now as well you can post as an anonymous group member just yeah. as group member has posted this post so people come into yeah. your group and like you know anonymous people like how how does this guy have such an epic mustache what's his secret if they don't want to look <laughs> like a fanboy they can just post an anonymous post you know what i mean right Okay. So, yeah, cool. yeah that, that's option is there for people too. Mm. And that the posting is sort of the, that next piece. So in, in most of your groups, you just allow people to post whatever or do you have approvals? Um, I've been in groups where both things happen or maybe it depends on the size or if it's a specific thing or how spammy the group is. Um, none of my groups currently have approval unless 
people go a bit rogue and just kind of post stuff that's kind of borderline a bit too often then we make their posts to be approved like you can set that for a member specific to be posted like that um but no we don't typically like do approval on posts it's too much of a pain to add the admin that kind of stuff you know in groups that are getting hundreds of posts a day you don't want to read them all it's just manic yeah yeah Uh, i guess that that helps build community as well i can come in and just yeah post whatever i want um yep as long as it's what about like terms and guidelines do you generally stipulate specific things or do you just kind of go with the the standard ones that facebook gives you no you no we it? have we have set rules so i host the rules on my um, my agency website so it'd be like you know, insightful dot blah 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 and go read the rules when you join the group um do you agree to the rules yep are you a business owner in australia yep um hey can we have your email address we might want to contact you about um you know upcoming events in the next couple of months assuming corona is not around anymore so but yeah definitely you got got to have rules otherwise people just go rogue Mm. and that 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 information collection that's an interesting piece so when they join the group and they give you your their email address are you then also um, opting them into to your mailing list as well at the moment all we do is we collect the email addresses so um we're collecting hundreds of email addresses a month um they know they're going to get an email i haven't got around to email on them yet again like that's just a license to print money so i've got a system that i use that literally goes um 100 people join the group um i've got an approve button um when I click approve, it will grab everyone's email address. It will dump them into a Google sheet with their name, surname, Facebook link, um, blah, 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 blah. Then that automatically goes and drops into campaign monitor into a list. Mm-hmm. So that list right now is sitting at like thousands of people. Um, and that's an all automated process using like Zapier and stuff as well. So yeah. um, again, like, you know, everyone can do this like it's it's pretty easy to do um and then tell me if you can like i'd like to hear where anyone can you know get you know two to three to four hundred potential new clients for free at that level from anywhere you know anything anything can outperform that like i think that's such a massive opportunity doing that as well mm-hmm. yeah i think you you're bang on the money there it's for if it's this or paid ads, I mean, even paid ads aren't performing at that kind of you know, 10, 20, 30 leads out of one group um, mm. where it's very specifically, hey, yeah, that, that case study resonates with me. I want that same thing. Hey, let's have a chat. Mm. Um, if, if that's the level of engagement that you can build up through these things by posting a couple of times a week, bringing some other people on to help you manage it. Hmm. massive well massive. you think about it from a if you think about it from a media buying point of view versus what i'm doing as well so you're running a page and you're on facebook you're like i'm going to run an ad and i'm going to try and contact other agency owners and i'm going to try and to get them to engage with me you, you're cutting through like every third scroll on facebook is an ad you know and how many agency mm-hmm. owners are sitting on facebook going oh shit, i'm really interested in what chris is you know whereas the facebook group mm-hmm. those guys are like actively seeking out I need an agency coach. I want to be in a community. I need help. Mm. Like, you know, it's so different. It's so, such, so much more targeted. Mm. Yeah, it's a whole different psychology. It's much more like a YouTube um, kind of psychology where I'm going there to how to grow my agency, how to start a Shopify store, how to yep. code in XML, whatever. Mm. You, you're going there to solve a problem that you have. And I think a lot yep. of people search for groups as well. Um, well, their intent is, is, is better. Yeah. Their intent is uh, it's yeah. a, an active intent, as a, uh, mm-hmm. whereas mm-hmm. like sitting on Facebook is like it's just passive. You, know, you see an ad yeah. and you're like, oh, I'm not really that interested in it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, that 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 different psychology from I'm actively looking for something, I'm looking yeah. for a solution to my problem versus this thing's just annoying me and coming up through my. So uh, it's it's feet. much quicker as well when you think about it. Right. Like, you know, yeah. I join your group as an example. Like I, I I wake up in the morning, I'm like, my agency's driving me mental. I need a Facebook group. I join your group. Within the afternoon, you could onboard me as a client. Whereas in a paid yeah. ad, you'd be like, you're probably going to have to show me like 10 ads going, hey, I'm Chris, and here's a case study, and here's another case study, and here's some mm-hmm. other stuff, and here's my webinar, and here's blah, 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 blah. blah. It takes three months later, you've landed me as a client. So yeah. it's yeah. much slower. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, 
yeah, that that different that slight switch in in psychology is super super important. That I'm I'm the one reaching out to you. You solve my problem right now. I I like you. I trust you, and you can build that business relationship much quicker. So, yeah, hmm. it makes a lot of sense, mate. Really, really, really interesting stuff, and super super powerful way for people to build their businesses. Yep. If people want to find out more about building their Facebook groups, about insightful, about the work that you do um, in your agency, where are some of the best places for them to come and connect with you? Um, well, yeah, insightful.com.au is where we run our agency from. Sorry, we're a full service agency um, and a website design <clears throat> agency as well. Um, and then I've obviously got the course that um, teaches people how to build Facebook groups. So um, we won't be able to drop that in the comments or something, but that's yeah. insightfulcourses.com.au. So spelled exactly the same as insightful, we just, just add courses and then do .com.au at the end of it. And that's the Facebook group. Um, I'm actually, I had a chat with my partner last night as well. And we're like, you know, I'm, I'm go, I want to try and make this available to more business owners as well. So we're about to significantly like drop the price as well. Um, Cause even at the moment, it's, it's only like a couple hundred bucks at the moment, but I really, there's a few other guys out there that are just, they service a lot of people with their courses and they do it at a really good price. So, and I'm like, yeah, I'm happy to do that. So we're going to move it to like 50 bucks or something to sell the course. I, w I want like, you know, thousands and thousands of people doing what I'm doing because I, I really mm -hmm. believe in it as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, I love that's that. I right. think it's, it, it's a super powerful way to, to, be, to build business and particularly where we're at as a globe at the moment and going forward, having support systems, having a social place to go and connect with like-minded people, having community, that is going to be a massive, massive piece for people going forward. Um, <clears throat> the, way, the way things are playing out, having that support group, having someone you can go and talk to that knows what you're talking about, about the thing that you're passionate about, super super important so then facebook groups are a great way to build that facebook's not going anywhere anytime soon and as you said if they're prioritizing groups it's a great great place for people to go and create community and actually grow your business so yeah yep. really appreciate you dropping by it's been awesome to connect and and, and yeah really appreciate the the, the insights because it's a um maybe an underutilized um, aspect for a lot of people out there that yeah hopefully they'll they'll either they'll jump in uh Try, jump on your course for 50 bucks even for a couple hundred bucks super super valuable and i'll, yeah, I'll drop the link yeah to that I, i'm happy to give away like um like i mentioned to the other day as well um if you want to get people to complete some kind of action the first people to i don't know share your um share this interview on their linkedin's and you say it i'm happy to give away five like licenses for free so i'll leave that to you you can you can decide the five winners cool. that get it so they'll get complete access to everything all right, we'll, we'll add that to the show notes when I publish this app. Five people that do something, which you'll yep. find out we'll whatever that we'll ends that up being. Yep. <laughs> Five people that send some sort of photo to somewhere private um, or do something even better. Um, we'll find something for them to do, take an action. Sharing the podcast is probably a much safer, better bet. Um, yep. We'll get you into Paul's program so you can learn how to build a Facebook group and start to monetize and grow your business. Paul, thanks so much, mate. Um, Really, really valuable, really good stuff. Appreciate yeah, you thanks for having me. Swinging by the show. I really enjoyed it. It was awesome. And I look forward to seeing you grow your group. Yeah, fantastic. Me too. I, mean, yeah. so I might have to start a few few new ones. Um, definitely going to have a, yeah, have to chat to you about getting that going. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks so much, Paul, for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day, mate. And we'll catch everyone on the next episode. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks.